All right, folks, it's the bourbon shop again. And as you can see, I'm not alone. I got a good friend with me right, right now, Angelo. So this is what we're going to take a look at, a bell for. Um, but then you're going to find out why we got larceny sitting here. So hang with us and let's get into it. Okay, so we're back with uh, Angelo, and before we get into this, I'm just going to ask Angelo a couple questions about bourbon. Now, you already told me you're not uh, a what, bourbon connoisseur or whatever. I would not uh, call myself a bourbon connoisseur, for sure. Okay, but here's the thing. I did look in your closet. Okay. But what I did notice is you got a little bit of everything in there. So how do you get to the point for your palate? What, what made you just go across the whole spectrum of whiskey, and do you have a favorite? Ah, good question. Uh, the first part of the question is uh, I've had the privilege of traveling and as you well know a lot of that's based on my job and as you travel you have an opportunity to explore maybe mm -hmm. different cuisines and foods and that opens your palate up right mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. different types of alcohol and products and so Absolutely. I think what you're seeing is a reflection of that right which is the sort of a broad taste based on just things that I've uh, stumbled into over the years. Yeah, okay. Because you got, um, I saw some um, scotch, you have scotch in there? Yes. What else do you have in there? Oh, there, there's lots of wine, primarily yeah. red wines. Okay. I have uh, some white and rouge wines for people who are for, for visitors, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm biased towards uh, red wines. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been a cognac guy, mm -hmm. you probably recall that, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, lots of bottles of that. Uh, and so then you'll see again mixes of other things as well, vodkas as yep. well as gins to to sort of accommodate uh, mixing drinks in particular. And I think I even saw some Japanese uh, uh, whiskeys in there. I, I have uh, sort of a, a bias towards those products. I think the Japanese have done a great job of taking the, the different products that we like and just have refined them over time. And there's a consistency to the product that allows it to be very smooth and flavorable, flavorful at the same time. Good, good. Well, that's good because, you know, the whiskey world is opening up so much. Um, of course, there's a bourbon boom, but outside of the bourbon boom, there's so many other flavors that you can uh, go into to find your palate. So never be afraid to just experiment. Uh, the best way to do that, if you know someone who has a nice collection, or to go to a bar and just try things before you purchase. And do your research. Uh, sometimes if you look at the stories behind some of the things that, uh, that's out there, that might pique your interest, and then you will begin to find out okay, well, I like this particular bourbon. And then you find out about the distillery. And now you might understand that, okay, what this company is putting out, this is my wheelhouse for my palate. And then you'll see that that one distillery puts out a lot of different kind of brands that you didn't even know was connected. So it's a lot of, a lot of nuances to it. So um, it's, it's, it's challenging, but, it, but it's fun. So I would say just, you know, enjoy and experiment. Now today, this is a fresh pour for myself and for you. You've never had the I have before. not. No, I have not. Okay. So just a little feedback or history on Belfort. This is actually uh, from a, a Hall of Fame hockey player. Name, his name is Ed Belfort. Now, I have my notes here because, as I told you, I forgot my tablet. So we have to do this old school. So he was a hockey player. He had two Stanley Cups, a uh, gold medal. And he also, uh, once he retired, he wanted to do something else to do. And he was always a whiskey and bourbon enthusiast. And so he wanted to get into whiskey and bourbon. And so he came up with Belfort. Now, this is not your typical, um, how should I say, celebrity brand. Now, so it, meaning that Matthew McConaughey attached himself to Wild Turkey. And so he has out a, a, a brand of bourbon called Long Branch. Now, he did go and do the research and told uh, the wild turkey industry that, okay, this is what I like to have in a bourbon. And then they kind of catered to him. But it's not his. He attached his name to that distillery. What Ed has done is came up with his own mash bill went to a MGP or a mass production uh, industry that just have barrels and barrels of, of whiskey 
and they came up with the match bill that he wants and this is his personal name so he's not this is not a celebrity whiskey that just for name's sake he came up with it look at the bottle he put the money into designing the bottle himself this is very unique so he's very serious about this something else he did um, he asked for the support of his daughter and his son now they took the time to go to school to learn about all the history and how to make bourbon the chemistry of it so yeah they really got involved in this and took it serious so this is a weeded bourbon this is coming in at 60% corn 30% wheat 10% malty barley now when I say it's a weeded bourbon that means there's no rye in it most bourbons may have a rye and that's when you get that spicy uh, note that little punch normally weeded bourbons are a little bit more subdued now in a bourbon world we don't like to use the word smooth so you guys forgive me I want to use the word subdue okay deal with it <laughs> all right so let's have a pour let's let's do it and let's see what you think about this by the way Eddie Belfour is a hockey player and I know that because he would play against my beloved Detroit Red Wings oh there you go <laughs> All right, so normally what we want to do is just take a look at the color because this is young bourbon. And another reason why I like his distillery is, let me show you something here. You see, can you see that? Can you see what that says? Without my glasses, that's a challenge. It okay, so <laughs> it, says, it says age minimum 33, 33 months. months. So it's a young bourbon. Now, the reason why I like this is a lot of bourbons now take off the age statement. Uh, and so you don't know how long the bourbon is uh, aged for. It can be four years, six years, it can be two years. You don't know. So I always appreciate when they up front and they let you know exactly what's in the bottle. So this is another reason why I would recommend this without even tasting it, just the honesty that he's putting it out there, okay? So with that being said, let's just look at the color. And... What do you think about the color? Do you, would you consider that dark? I know you're not a uh, That's bourbon. a really good question. I would call that a, sort of a medium color. It's exactly right. Yes. Yeah, it's a medium color. That's one by the age as well. Now, what I want you to do is take your bottle, your glass, spin it like this, and then just look at the legs, the coating, the coating on the glass. Yeah, absolutely. Can you see that? Um, the legs are rich. They yeah, don't just, yeah. uh, you can tell it's uh, so a very, a, right, full product. Yeah, yeah. So for 33 months, they really have a pretty nice product by looking at it right now. Now, let's just take it to the nose. And you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind when you, when you nose this. What do you think? Well, you know what? There's two different things that I know that one is the, I'll call it the fire or the alcohol content. It, mm -hmm. it jumps on the left nostril and the right nostril. The ethanol. Yes, that ethanol is definitely there. Mm -hmm. And on the right nostril, somehow it seems like it's dividing my nostrils, right? It's almost a vanilla, a vanilla flavor yep. or note. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, it's a uh, vanilla. If you, if you smell it again, I sort of get the smell when you walk through a lumber yard. That wood, that old. Mm. Yeah. I get maybe some dark fruit, um, like a uh, like a plum or a raspberry type note. That there's that citrus element to it, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Yep. Now, would you say you smell anything like? Um, how how would you describe the sweetness of it? What do you think that smells like? Well, I'm not really picking up a lot of the sweetness. Again, just an element of the vanilla sort of hint. Well, that's sweet. And then yeah. the back to your point, yeah. the ethanol is probably more predominant yep. in this particular product. Good. And see, I'm also picking up some brown sugar uh -huh. in this. Um, now, there's a dark brown sugar that you can buy and the light brown sugar you, you can buy. I'm picking up the light brown sugar. But keep in mind that this is 33 months old. Uh, so for right now, I'm very impressed that of the, the use of this. It's not coming off grainy and grassy, all right? So let's get to the good part, man. Okay. Let's, let's, 
Let's have a drink. What do you think? Very rich flavor again, from the tip of the tongue mm -hmm. all the way through. Mm -hmm. There's that bite yep. on the side of the tongue. There's a variety of flavors. How about yourself? What are you well, noting? Here's the thing is, although this is not a rye bourbon, I get some spice on this. Mm. And it's, it's a masquerade in that ethanol. So because it's, it's young, you want to get some of that ethanol kick. Which come across like it's a lot of rye spice in it, although there's no rye in this at all. Now, I'm also picking up that vanilla. I'm also getting hints of um, that oak and a light hints of chocolate on the back end. But, you know, I'm going to go in for a second sip. Okay. okay. I'll join you. So to me, it's pretty consistent with the nose. And it has a nice mouthfeel. It's not drying me out. Some bourbon has a tendency to dry that tongue out right away. The finish is good because although I'm not drinking it, do you still feel it? I, all the way. Yeah, yeah, so it has a really, really nice finish. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this and I can't wait to see where it's gonna to go to uh, after it ages a little bit more. Now, as you can see, I've got the larceny here because it's very similar in Mashville. The larceny is coming in at 68% corn. Uh, Belfort was coming in at 60% um, corn. Larceny is 20% wheat. Um, Belfort is 30% wheat. Larceny is 12% malted barley and, and uh, yeah, and uh, Belfort is 10. Kind of similar. That this is four to six years aged. So I want to taste this to kind of get a picture and show Angela where this might be going. Okay? So we're going to take a pause, rinse these glasses out, and then we're going to uh, take a, a sip of larceny. Okay, so now we're just going to taste larceny just to get the um, overall thought of where a three and a half month uh, wheat and bourbon can, can go and what the end result can be. Now, have you had larceny before? I have not. Okay. Now, this is coming in at um, 92%. I, and I, I believe it's the same. I think this is 92%. I'll check it, and if it's not, I'll just edit it for you guys and put it up there. Now, you see it's um, John Fitzgerald name is on here. John, just a little fun history. John Fitzgerald never, ever ever made any whiskey whatsoever so the story with him is that he was an agent back in the days of prohibition and back in those days it was a law that they had to have the keys to all the warehouses or rick houses where they stored the bourbon john having the keys will help himself to, <laughs> to some of the finest barrels in the uh, the warehouses and take them for himself Okay, now this is a, the federal agent. And then he would bottle that uh, bourbon and sell it. So after a while, he became known as one of the best distillers in the nation, although he never distilled anything. Hence the word larceny, because, uh, of course, that means thievery. <laughs> so that's a little side note behind the word larceny. If you look, you see a key. That looks like a jail key. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he ended up there. Or but, a key uh, way for it. Right? Yeah. yeah he was, Absolutely. He, he was a slick rascal. <laughs> so again, this is a little older. So let's just see if we can compare them and appreciate everything that we looked at with uh, Bell for. So let's look at the uh, color. Color might be a, a tad darker than what we had before, not much. Uh, would you call that a dark medium? Yeah, yeah, I would go with a dark medium. But it's not much darker, so they did pretty good with here. here. Um, one thing I forgot to tell you about um, you know, you know, Belfort is that two months before they it matures, they put, I believe it is, uh chestnut 
wood stage in uh, the barrel. Okay. So that helps the flavor. And that might be the reason why it has a jump as far as this young age that maybe mm -hmm. it tastes a little older because of the extra flavor. That's yeah, so yeah, I forgot to mention that. Now look at the legs on this one. Yeah, well, it, in, entirely yeah. right? Different in the sense of uh, it doesn't seem like the alcohol is uh, going to ever drip down. Yeah, yeah, so you see the difference there. Right. And that's, that's just going to age. That's correct. That, that's not knocking this at all. It's just maturity. Okay. So let's take this one to the nose. How's the ethanol on this one? I've learned the word ethanol and the importance of it. So I'm <laughs> going to say the ethanol is not as uh, as sharp. Yeah, yeah. Or aggressive as the other product, the larceny. Yeah. Or as the, what's the other product name again? Belfour. Oh, and what's the proof of this one? This is 92. Well, that's why I'm getting them confused. Uh, the, the, the Belfour. This is lovely. Yeah. So it matured more, and so the sweetness of that barrel, all the, 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 that they, it was pulling out of that wood, it was able to do that for two to three to four years more okay. and pull yeah. out that sweetness. And so that kills down the ethanol smell. Now, what do you get out of this? And I knew you were going to ask me that question, so that's why I was trying to cheat by getting a few extra sniffs. You know, it's, it's, this is because the ethanol is not so prominent. I think that this one might be better to discern by taste than smell for me, mm -hmm. right? To maybe break it down because I'm not picking up anything that's persistent or more dominant than something else. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'll just say what I'm picking up. Okay. Is I'm gonna say it's um, caramel Ford. Um, you get a bit of like a vanilla bean uh, when you, you, you smell this. You also get a, a fruit note here too. Um, just like the other one, it's kind of citrus, maybe like a, um, almost like a grapefruit. Um, what's that, that ruby red grapefruit? Mm, yes. Yeah, that's kind of sweet and mm -hmm. clingy. And yeah, the fruit is there. So this, this is pretty much like this, but just more mature, okay? Because I get a hint of chocolate in this one too. I have some oak. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a discerning palate. Yeah, we get, <laughs> get oak in this too. Okay, let's go for a taste. Let's do That's it. That's what you want to do, right? Absolutely. Let's just talk, stop talking about smelling this stuff and <laughs> tasting it. Now, can you remember what that tastes like when you had the, uh, the Belfour? So you the Belfour from the tip of the tongue all the way back to the throat was um, strong. Mm -hmm. That ethanol was strong. This is not the tip. It's very smooth. In the middle of the tongue, there's a little bit of that bite. Mm -hmm. On the outside of the tongue, it's just a very nice, smooth, so, sort of collection of flavors. Yeah, yeah. So can you pick a flavor out, one or two? We're nice? gonna try, because okay. even with my smelling before, I couldn't really yeah. isolate it. it it's fine. just overall yeah. very, very, very nice product. Yeah. Now, I still get that uh, the brown sugar. I'm gonna fool you with this one. Okay. For some reason, I'm getting like a cotton candy. That's crazy, but I'm getting this. It's like a can, some kind of candy um, from my childhood. I'm not sure what it is. Like a weedy taste. You know, they've seen that this is a weed for it um, product. But I'm still getting that, uh, like a, an apple, a Granny Smith apple. I'm getting this, some kind of a apple in this. So I, it's a little nutty too. I, I like to vouch for this gentleman. He had not <laughs> been drinking prior to this shooting. Okay, so when you hear all these creative things coming, right? It's the product drawing, <laughs> drawing these fond memories out. <laughs> yeah, this is all off the rip. So yeah. So, so I just wanted to give you a. Uh, a taste of bourbon from uh, something that's up and coming. Cause uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is gonna be like when they hit that four, five to six year age statement and how it's gonna compare to this. Because I think this is a very good product. I will actually buy this again, knowing what it is and where, and the work that they put behind it, the story that's behind it. Uh, I would support that. Uh, because again, they put their whole name behind it. It's a family business. This is not a celebrity endorsed bourbon. 
But this is Mr. Belfort's name behind this. So I respect that. I respect the fact that he puts the age statement on the bottle. Head, head to all of you other ones out there who don't want to tell us how old the bourbon is. Stop that. Stop it. Just let us know. That's my, yo, go ahead. I, I just, because for me, again, a lot of bite with the Belfort. And this product was almost like so balanced mm -hmm. that I couldn't really separate some of the flavors and I don't have the knowledge of how the product's made to even sort of lean me in that direction. It'd be interested to get another opinion, yeah. okay? okay? On these products as someone who probably yeah. has similar bourbon experience as I do. You wanna, you wanna invite somebody else in? You know what? Well, we got a chair right here. We do have a chair here. Okay. So Mr. Okay. Norbert Grundy, how about if you come and join us as well? <laughs> I like to say that as an alcoholic, Mr. Grundy, I mean, as an experienced alcohol drinker, <laughs> go cut it out. <laughs> so what we're going to do, because um, I, I didn't bring enough sniffing glasses, but if you can get him you know, one more glass and we're going to have him taste each. Okay, so we got hooked up with a couple glasses, thanks to Angelo. Now, Nobra was standing over in the corner, so he heard everything we said. So listen to him very careful because if he repeats all the things that we say, he just took cheat notes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is the Bell yeah. 4. This is 33 months old, young. And so just take a take a taste of that, look at it and smell it. What do you think? Uh, do you taste a burn or? Yes, okay. Now, any notes that you can sort of jump out at you? It's 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 uh, it's actually very smooth. Mm -hmm. um, he I said the word smooth, smooth bourbon family. I I tried to tell him, but go ahead. <laughs> it's it's actually it's, for me, uh, it's very smooth. It's very flavorful. Good. And I don't have all of the uh, special words to, to yeah. put into this. Um, not really a super bourbon drinker, mm -hmm. but I do know a good bourbon when I drink it. Mm -hmm. And this is really good. Okay. I mean, I don't. I'm not sure where the price point is at, but. Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, it has good legs, has good color. Uh, I do taste a little of the uh, the oak in it, the good. barrel. In it. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, I appreciate it. That's okay. good. That's so, a good drink. Now we're gonna go to Larceny. Okay, this is a little better age. It's coming in at four to six years old. Off the top, it's. Uh, it has a similar smell. Mm -hmm. um, seems to be a little bit smoother just by smell. Okay. So, distinct difference for me. Okay, what, what's, what's the biggest difference? Uh, you say? A little bit smoother. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit easier for the palate. Good, good. Okay. Um, I taste a little bit more of the barrel yeah. in it. Um, I, I guess it's aged a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's good. Good, good. So I appreciate you fellas um, joining me on this one. And it just, again, just to show the difference between uh, one bourbon and the other. Now, just for a side note, if you ever want to work on improving the palate, one of the best ways to do this is by side by side. So if you just stick to drinking just one bourbon, then your palate will only get used to that. But test yourself. Get two bourbons and just take a sip of one and then a sip of another. Ask yourself, why do I like this over the other? What is it about it? Uh, what's the taste? What, what notes am I getting out of this bourbon, bourbon rather than the other one? And then you'll be able to break down the things that you like and do the same thing with the nose. When you smell one bourbon, then smell the other one. Which one do you prefer the best? Why do you prefer it the best? And that way you can start developing a nice nose and taste and palate uh, for the things you're drinking. Now we're gonna take a pause because Angelo is gonna make us a what? An old fashioned, but I, I wanted to make another comment because this show is so educational. Because it teaches you when you listen to people who are connoisseurs or experts, such as Mr. Keith here. I'm not paying him, by the way. Okay. It, it, it teaches you how to appreciate product, and then you might find a product that not your favorite. I would challenge you to think of, but what would it go with? And so, what we're about to do is take a product, mix it with something else, and see what the reaction is of Keith and Norbert. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, we're back and you see we got some stuff going on here. Uh, so we have um, two bourbons here. We have Bullet coming in at 104 proof 
and redemption is coming in at 105 proof so i'm not the one to drink cocktails all right i, I normally drink mine straight um occasionally on the rocks but normally just straight sip so this is kind of out of my wheelhouse but uh, this is more so in Angelo's wheelhouse, so he's the teacher on this one. I'm turning over to Angelo. Well, this is a privilege again to continue to sort of share some of the things that I've been able to do. And most of the things that you're gonna see are things that I've learned from others. So I don't wanna act as the originator of some of the recipes or products that you see. So what we have here is we have two bourbons uh, that we're going to be sampling with the same mix. And we'd like to get, I'd like to get these gentlemen's reactions to see if they prefer one of the bourbons over the other, which is what is the best combination to have, okay, with these products to get that desired taste that uh, might fit your palate. And so we're using, again, the Bullet uh, Bourbon as well as the Redemption Bourbon. And if you want to know more about those products, <laughs> I'm not one to say names, but... Keith has the answer to that. And what we've done is we're taking two two ounce pours of the bourbons and we're coupling that with one two ounce pour of this very delicious, uh, I should keep this as a secret, but I'll share, Woodford Reserve Old Fashioned Cocktail Syrup. So we're going to use one two ounce pour of that. And then also Woodford Reserve has these delicious cherries, bourbon cherries. And so we add one cherry and to your liking maybe a little bit of a spoon or a fraction of a spoon of the cherry juice okay so we have this set up here this is the redemption right and this is the bullet so uh do you have your set up in the same way or well, no? same order there okay, we go so yes. here's the redemption let's just try this one out first Now this is coming in, I can taste the um, the high rye flavor of this because this is a high rye bourbon and you sort of get that spice um, in this particular drink. Um, it, it goes well uh, with, the, with the syrup. And what's the other? It's just the syrup, right? That is correct. And, and then we have okay. again the bourbon okay. cherries, mm -hmm. right? Now since this is 105 proof, it's able to take uh, cocktail mixes and still uh, be true to the bourbon. And so you're still tasting that redemption, high quality, high ride taste. You're still going to get some of that vanilla. I still taste some of the, um, the oak in this. But the flavors of the, the, the cocktail mix is really setting this off. So this, this is excellent. I can't wait to see what the, uh, the bullet is going to do. So I'm going to try the bullet. All right, so that's interesting. The bullet, the flavors are more subdued to me than the redemption. And I think that's, that's the reason why this is that high rise spice. So that this has more of a kick. Not saying that this isn't good, this is good too. So it, it, it really, it's really on your palate. If I had to choose between the two, I'd probably go with the high rye mix uh, over the, the bullet mix. Yeah, because both are being true to the bourbon. This is 104 proof. So you still get a lot of that uh, bullet flavors in it. You have that toast, that, 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 that taste of that chocolate. You have the, uh, uh, the spice. Uh, you have the, um, even the, this has a lot of cherry influence. So coupled with the cherry from Woodford, that even sets it off a little better. But if I had to choose between the two, I would go with the Redemption. What about you? I totally agree, and this is the first time that I've used the Redemption in the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, because of your education on the taste and flavors from rye, I c it seems as if uh, the mix has sort of ma made those taste even more dynamic or fuller. It's a beautiful taste. Mm -hmm. And so I think the bullet works very, very well, but if I had to pick one, it would definitely be going with the Redemption. Uh, I echo the same uh, sentiments that you guys just, just mentioned, but yeah, I like the redemption 
uh, because it uh, I can sip it a little slower, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. right? And, yeah. uh, and but but the flavor is still there, even with both of them. The flavor is there, but with the redemption, I think is just is, it would be a better fit for me. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it. This is why a lot of people actually choose to have their old fashioned uh, made with a rye whiskey over even a bourbon whiskey because of that uh, that kick, that, that rye taste, that influence. So it seems like that rye really mixes well with, with the flavors of the cocktail mix. But either one is good. So if you are, um, if anyone out there tried any of these mixes with, a, with the, uh, um, as far as the old fashioned, uh, leave it in the comment. Or what's your favorite bourbon or rye uh, when you make your old fashioned? And if you've tried either the Bell Four or the Larsman, um, I'd like to hear your comments about that as well. Well, I'd like to thank you, Norbert. Thank I'd like you. to thank you, thank Angelo, you. for spending some time with me. I appreciate it. These are my first guests on the show. Uh, so these, are, we go way back. We're not even going to talk about how old we are, <laughs> but we go way back. 30-something years, so do the math. Uh, so please, uh, if you like the show, you like the content, please like, give me that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And if you like the show, just uh, subscribe so you won't miss any content coming out further this month or even next week. And again, thank you. And as always, the best way to enjoy your bourbon is drink it the way you like it. But the best way to drink your bourbon is in a responsible way. See you next time on The Bourbon Shop. <laughs>